good start. What do you think? Oh, hi! <laughs> uh, we were just writing um, Dougie's autobiography. It's called The Dog. He's very excited about it. I am too. You're here. I'm so happy to see you. We've got a great show planned today. We're going to read This is the Rope by Jacqueline Woodson. Illustrated by James Ransom. And then we've got a great activity planned. Come on. This is The Rope, a story from the Great Migration by Jacqueline Woodson and illustrated by James Ransom. This is The Rope my grandmother found beneath an old tree a long time ago back home in South Carolina. This is the rope my grandmother skipped under the shade of a sweet smelling pine. This is the rope my grandfather used to tie the few things they owned to the top of a car that drove my grandmother, who was a mother now from South Carolina all the long way to a place called New York City. This is the rope my grandmother held tight to as my grandfather drove real slow past the people and big city buildings that seemed to go on and on. This is the rope my grandmother used to dry the sweet smelling flowers she grew in small window boxes, reminding her of the flowers back home. Where the land, she said, went on and on. This is the rope my grandfather strung so that my mama's diapers could blow dry in the hot city breeze. And this is the rope my mama tied around a small ducky's neck, then pulled it along singing, quack, quack, quack. This is the rope my mama held out to the girls on the block, her new Brooklyn block, a home of their own that they finally owned. Mama asked shyly, anybody want to play? This is the rope my mama first tripped on as she sang with her friends. Miss Lucy had a baby, she named him Tiny Tim. This is the rope mama's brother took from her room for some crazy game that little boys play. This is the rope my mama found again 10 years later when my grandfather said, we need a bit of rope to tie these things down inside this year car, like that rope we used to have from back home. Then he drove with my mama off to a college far away from the city, while up at the window, my grandmother waved. This is the rope my mama placed on the piano around family photos and me, just a baby, and then a bit bigger, already reaching for it. This is the rope my daddy used when he showed me the way to tie a sailor's knot. Two times around and pull it real tight. You want whatever you make or do in your life, my daddy said, to last. This is the rope my mama turned as she waved to my daddy and taught me to sing the Miss Lucy song out on our sidewalk, right here in Brooklyn, just last Friday night. This is the rope that held up the sign saying, we are all family at our picnic reunion in the big park up the street from our home. This is the rope, threadbare and graying, 
that I traded with Grandma for a brand new one. Then I jumped and you jumped. B, my name is Beatrice. I come from Brooklyn. As my family smiled proudly and the sun began setting as Grandma held onto her rope from back home. and her long ago memory of sweet smelling pine. Wow, that was a great book. So in This is the Rope, we see that Jacqueline Woodson takes an ordinary object and turns it into something extraordinary. The object she uses is the rope. It's right in the title. How easy is that? So she just found something that was something in every household, something very common, and then she gave it this amazing history. And she wrote how it got passed down from grandmother to mother to daughter. So that's three generations of people who got this rope. So today, what we're gonna do is you're gonna find ordinary object in your house. Okay, so you can use anything. You could use a, a spatula, like a rubber band would work, a book, a blanket. I'm going to use this wooden spoon. Now, as writers, we're making up our own stories. Okay, so what our activity is, is we're going to write a history about our object. So I have created a timeline. I want you guys to do the same. So mine is titled History of Spoon. Okay, so on a timeline, we have a beginning, and then our timeline is going to go to today. All right, so we're going into current time. So I'm going to look at my object for a second, and I'm going to start thinking about this object. You too, doggy. I want you to think too. All right, now what? Could a spoon be used for? Some ideas can come from my family. So my grandmother used to make pasta sauce all the time. And she made a special pasta sauce that it took four or six hours. Okay, that's a, that's a full day of pasta sauce making. So that is a nice place I think I'm going to start. So what I'm gonna do is I, I see the beginning of my timeline. And for my story, I'm going to say that this was my grandmother's spoon. And she used it to make pasta sauce. Now, keep in mind that if you don't want to write, that's okay. There are a couple options here. You can draw pictures on your timeline, or you can write little blurbs, or you can do both together. And if you need some help with writing, ask an adult. I'm sure they'll help. So at the beginning of my timeline, I'm going to put pasta sauce. And then I'm going to draw a little pot that's got some steam coming off of it. Pasta sauce. Okay? And this is where the spoon story starts. So now, I'm still thinking about my spoon. And you know, one part that kind of jumps out to me in this story is when the brother steals the rope for his own games. Now, a spoon is an interesting object because it could become a pirate sword or a magical wand or really anything. Oh my goodness, I know, a microphone. Imagination. Hope you've got yours on today. So let's have the next thing be a microphone. I love that. I'm going to have... The mother, who's a little girl at this point, gets the spoon and it becomes her microphone. That's my microphone. I know it kind of looks like an ice cream cone, but I like it. And now I think I'm going to say that a brother comes in and takes this and turns it into a magic wand for his own game and the spoon goes missing. So what could your object also go missing? It's kind of exciting when a mystery happens in the middle of a story. So 
mysterious disappearance. became magic wand. And I'm going to draw a little picture with it. Here's my little wand. It's got some, I don't know, sparks coming off of it, doing magic right there. All right. And then one day, my spoon is found again. And A lot of options here. What do you think, doggy? Oh, doggy, you you like the spoon. All right. I think I think that doggy ends up taking the spoon and using it as a bone because he's a dog and they love to chew on things. Yeah, you like that? You like that? Ooh, of course you do. So then for today. The spoon ends up with doggy as a toy. Doggy toy. And that's how the spoon reappears. So I've got my doggy. So now I have this whole history of the spoon. There's a couple of things I can do here. I can write an entire story of how this spoon got passed down from my grandmother as her pasta sauce spoon, and then became my mother's microphone when she was playing with it, and then it got stolen by her brother mysteriously and became a wand, and then one day Doggy was searching around the house and found this mysterious spoon, and it became Doggy's favorite toy. And then maybe at the very end, I can take the spoon back, and I just appreciate it as a spoon. And it just becomes a special object. I love the part where the rope ends up with all the family portraits and just becomes a part of the house. Pretty cool, huh? So I can take this and I can make a whole story about the spoon the same way that Jacqueline Woodson told a story about the rope. Mm hmm yeah, I agree. Oh, we were just talking about the dedication page of this book. I'm gonna read it to you. Jacqueline Woodson dedicates this book to the more than 6 million African Americans who left the unjust conditions of the South for a better life in the North from the early 1900s until the 1970s. My mother and grandmother were among them. I thank you all for your courage and for making a way out of no way. That is pretty remarkable. So, the subtitle of this book is A Story from the Great Migration. And like Jacqueline Woodson just told us in her dedication of the book, that was a time from about 1900 until the 1970s. So 70 years, that's a long time, where over 6 million African Americans moved from the unjust conditions of the South to northern cities. Uh, the cities included Chicago, Los Angeles, New York City, and also Cleveland, our city. They came for better jobs, better treatment, better education, and better lives. So that movement is known as the Great Migration. So when you're thinking about your story that you wrote today, your timeline of your ordinary object, I wonder if you can think of a journey that your family has taken or Maybe another family has taken a journey that you have heard of that happened to real people. And how maybe that object was involved in that journey. It might be a really fun writing exercise and help in the creation of your story. So thank you so much for joining me today on Playing with a Purpose presented by Lake Erie Inc. You can check out other episodes of Playing with a Purpose and other great writing programs at lakeerieinc.org. And also, check out Jacqueline Woodson. She's got tons of great books. Uh, her website is JacquelineWoodson.com. So I hope you get a chance to maybe go to the library and take the time to read some of her other books because she is she's a great writer. Yes, she is, Dougie. I know. I agree. That's what I was just telling you. Thank you so much again for joining me, and I look forward to seeing you next time.
Have a good one. Bye.